Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today I'm going to try to answer a question that I'm asked all the time. If you have a piece of property to take care of, would you recommend someone gets a tractor or a skid loader? And even though my tractor is a lower horsepower and a less expensive machine than my skid loader, I still think I've got enough of a point of reference to give a fair comparison between the pros and the cons of both of these machines. And the truth is, it's still, for me, a really hard decision, and it's going to depend on the type of work you're doing. And that's like a cliche answer that you can give to any question. Well, it depends on what you're doing, but it's also just the truth. So, to start with, I'll tell you what my machines are. This is a John Deere 2038R, 38 horsepower, fully hydrostatic tractor. This is the John Deere 325G, 75 horsepower machine with high flow and a severe duty door. And I love both of these machines, but there's no comparison between them whatsoever. This is an absolute powerhouse that can pretty much handle anything I try to do with it. And this is a much more limited compact tractor. But that doesn't mean that this machine is more useful to me than this one. Because like I said, for the third time now, it depends on what you're doing. So one example of that is brush cutting. I've got a brush cutter for both of these machines. Now this machine also has a mid-mount mower, which would be like a finish mower, and I've got a flail mower for it. But let's just talk about brush cutting with these two machines. The brush cutter on this machine is rated to handle one inch material, but I've cut two and three inch material. The brush cutter for this machine is rated to handle four inch material, and I could have got a cutter that will handle eight inch trees. And that is a huge tree. So, wow, a lot bigger cutting potential here. So you'd rather do your brush cutting with this one. Well, not really because the majority of the places that I do brush cutting only have one and two inch materials on them. They're saplings, maybe it's been let to grow for a year since the last time it was cut and it needs cleaned up. Well, this machine can travel less than half the speed of this machine. And, you know, the cutter that's on it isn't much wider. So, if you're mowing, a tractor is a better machine for mowing. If you're trying to clear some decent sized trees, well, this is the machine because you can run the regular cutter like I'm talking about, the swing boom mower that I have, or even a forestry mulcher. I've ran a forestry mulcher on this and we shredded a tree that was, you know, 14, 16 inch diameter. It doesn't care, it just shreds at the rate you go. So that's an example where you might get more work done faster with the smaller machine. But it's obviously not that way in all cases. So let's talk about the basic design of a skid loader. A skid loader is a boom with a machine designed around it. This entire design of this machine is to build something that can powerfully move a boom and also kind of uh it's focused more on grading on this machine the boom is kind of an afterthought or the loader so let's talk about loaders and lift capacity so when i was looking to get something bigger i already had this tractor i said it won't lift enough it's rated lift capacity something like a thousand pounds or, or maybe a little less and It'll actually lift 16, 1700 pounds an inch off the ground. And that's just not enough for what I do. So I thought, well, maybe I'll get a bigger tractor. And I started looking at what size tractor would I need to move the 3,500 pound stacks of plywood that I was getting on a regular basis. And the answer is I'd have to go into a five series or a six series to be able to carry 3,500 pounds in a tractor. And that is to get a, a lift capacity rating as high as what I want to move. And that is a big tractor. I couldn't do anything else with that tractor that I like to do. I couldn't 
you know, maneuver around in tight spaces or go do these jobs. It would be impractical to till a garden. What are you going to do? One pass? It's, it's not practical for me to have a 130 horse tractor for what I do. It just, it's not ideal for me. So I said, skid loader is the answer to move that much weight. And this machine actually only has a rated lift capacity of 2,900 pounds, I believe. And that's, I was like, that doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound right that some of these compact tractors can lift almost as much as a skid loader. And that's because they're make-believe numbers. They're using a different scale to measure what they can lift. So this tractor, if it says rated lift capacity 1,000 pounds, that's all it's got. That's what it can lift. This one, when they tell you the lift capacity, they're really talking about 30% or 50%, depending on the brand, either 30 or 50% of its rated operating capacity, which basically means how much do we think you should safely be able to lift up and drive around with. But 30 to 50% of tip rating. So the truth is, if you bolt the back end of this machine down where it's not coming up, you can lift 7,000 pounds with the loader. And to get a tractor that lifts 7,000 pounds, you're going to have an enormous machine. That's one of the really interesting things about this machine. It's got all that power in such a small package. Because the actual footprint of the track loader isn't as big as the tractor. It's a little bit wider, but it's not as long. So, so they've put all this power into such a small machine primarily to do a specific task. So if you're wanting to move dirt and grade, this machine is going to work at five times the speed of this machine. Big bucket that you can overfill, the ability to spin 360. It's just a perfect machine for it. And it even does a better job than a box blade at grading, if you ask me. Okay, so from everything I've said, this is clearly the perfect machine. It's small and it's powerful. What more could you want? Well, I already pointed out one reason to like this better. Let's look at a couple more. So this machine costs over twice as much as this machine. And even if we try to compare apples to apples with this being a 75 horse and look at the new Deer 75 horse Hydrostat, this is still a more expensive machine, although it starts to get closer. But it also, it isn't just more expensive when it comes to buying the machine, it's also dramatically more expensive to buy attachments for this machine as opposed to this one. You can get a brush cutter for this for like $2,000 and you'll probably spend $5,000 on a brush cutter for this. As just a random example, those aren't exact numbers that I looked up today, but just as a ballpark idea, attachments for this machine are going to cost twice as much. So there's a big win for the tractor. Another win for the tractor is anywhere you take this machine, it wreaks havoc. Unless you're very careful about only traveling in a straight line, anywhere this goes, you'll know it's been there. So we just put in the koi pond about 100 feet behind where I'm standing, and I did most of the work with the track loader. And as a result, I've got an area twice the size of the koi pond that has no grass in it. And I'm going to have to actively work to get grass back in that area. I could have done that whole job with the tractor and I would have had some ruts and a few bare spots, but we would have still had a yard around it. So that's a big factor. If you like to use your tractor in the yard, you don't want a skid loader because you can't use it in your yard. And I find that to be very limiting, to be honest. So a lot of times when I want to be working every day and I'm like, well, I can't do anything over there if it's I'm gonna tear up the yard so if this was my only machine I think I'd find myself using a shovel and a wheelbarrow more than I do now which is almost zero so I want to say a few more things about moving dirt with these machines when I was talking about you can move dirt a lot faster and more efficiently with this machine not only can you do it faster but as you do it you're gonna track the material in where this machine will pack it compact it and kind of smooth it out just by driving on it. This one will not, and if anything, it's going to leave ruts. 
Another factor for moving dirt is durability. This machine was built for this loader. This machine had a loader built for it, and that's a very big difference. So this loader is bolted onto the frame in one spot, whereas this one is just gonna be a lot more durable. So this machine, you could move dirt with it eight hours a day for the next five years, and it's not gonna care. This machine, if you're moving dirt with it eight hours a day, I bet you're gonna break something and wobble something out and wear something out. It's just not made for that. Sorry that I'm kind of bouncing around, but I didn't put out an outline for this. I'm just going off the top of my head. But I addressed the price difference, and something I forgot to mention on price is initial cost of everything is much higher on the skid loader, but maintenance cost, I would say, might be cheaper on the skid loader. And depreciation is actually probably lower on the skid loader, too. I have not done in-depth numbers on this, but the expected life on this machine, or the point at which it's considered high hours, is probably four or five times as high as this one. So if I'm shopping for a tractor, and it has a compact like this, and it has a thousand hours, that's moderately high hours. Not to the point where I wouldn't want to own it because it has a thousand hours, but that's a, that's a point where it's like a hundred thousand miles on a car, where you start to think, ah, oh, it's got a lot of hours on it. I'm going to knock a lot of price off. For this machine, a thousand hours is called breaking it in. And that number where you start to think of it as high hours might be more like 5,000 hours. And I also find that they have less frequent maintenance cycles, like your oil change and your hydraulic fluid change and things like that. So the more expensive machine can actually be less expensive to do maintenance on. But between these two machines, per hour, that one uses about two and a half times as much as fuel. This uses less than a gallon an hour, and I think that one uses more than two gallons an hour. With factoring in on both machines, it depends on how high and how hard you're running them. The next thing I want to mention is visibility. If I'm moving a pallet with this machine, it can be very difficult to see what I'm doing with the, with the forks. Same thing even if I'm just scooping up rocks or dirt or I'm trying to pick something small up with a grapple you can't really see the tip of your implement with the skid loader you have incredible visibility to see exactly what the blade on your bucket is doing or whatever else you have on the front of the machine it's not blocked by anything and that's a huge plus but as a negative to visibility on this machine you can see right there perfectly everything else all bets are off. I've moved my backup camera around. Some of them have them in different places. But no matter what, you're never going to get as good a visibility with the rest of the machine as you do with the tractor. Especially an open station tractor. So on this machine, I can't tell where my tracks are. I can't see what's next to my tracks. I can't see what's catty-cornered. I can't see what's at ground level right behind me. Whereas with this machine, I can just lean over like this and I can see is my tire an inch from that boulder or that tree or whatever the case may be. Is there a little kid right by my rear tire? I don't know. Let me look. And you can turn and you can see it. With that machine, sometimes if the kids are here at all, the grandkids, I have to stop where I'm at, open my window or call and be like, can you see the grandkids? Because I can't. So, you have a lot more overall visibility with this, but your bucket or your front implement, you have a lot more visibility with the skid loader. Next thing I want to talk about is safety. This could be debatable, but I consider this machine to be a lot safer than this machine. I just feel safer running it. Now, this machine is dangerous to anything that gets close to it. Whether that's a, a pet or a child or a rose bush or anything that gets in its way is in danger of being crushed. But this machine, I feel like as the operator, I'm in more danger. And a big part of that is rollover. With this machine, it weighs almost 10,000 pounds and it is locked to the ground and it's not going anywhere. It can handle extreme slopes. 
and I honestly feel if I rolled this machine over, the odds of serious damage to my the machine are low, and the odds of me being injured is almost zero. You could be potentially trapped in it, but it has safety exits and that sort of thing. Whereas this machine and most tractors are much more likely to flip over because of how the center of gravity and the weight distribution is. With this, you also have the danger of a spinning PTO. So that's my opinion on safety. And that includes even if you're in a full factory cab tractor. I've talked about a lot of things, but one of them I almost feel like I should have started with this because it's such a big deal is changing implements. Changing implements or attachments on this can be a real hassle. Even with a quick hitch, it can sometimes be a hassle. PTO shafts can be a hassle. This is completely effortless. To switch between the buckets and pallet forks is just five seconds. You don't even move out of the cab. You just push a button, move to your other implement, push a button. But even something like a brush cutter, there's no PTO shaft to hook up. You can always attach those flat face couplers with the machine running. Easy, easy, easy. I never think, oh, I'd like to do something, but I don't feel like switching attachments. Or with this, if I've got the tiller on, I say, well, I'd like to do just a little bit of digging with the backhoe and grind out a stump today and use the tiller. That's a full day just switching between those attachments. So, big thing to think about. Now, while we're talking about attachments, let's talk about the variety of attachments available. Both of these machines can basically be set up with almost anything. Versatility, it's hard to have a winner. There are a few things like a tractor can be better suited for a hay baler. You don't see a lot of baling hay on a skid loader. But there are quite a few things you can get on a skid loader that you can't get on a tractor. And you, So from a versatility standpoint, one factor is that you can have an attachment and a bucket or an attachment and a grapple. You basically are able to run two attachments at a time. Skid loader, you always have to switch to do two things. So that's a win for the tractor. Overall, rating which one is more versatile and you can do more things with, Surprisingly, I wouldn't have said this beforehand, but surprisingly, I think it's the skid loader. Because you can literally just put about anything you want on one. And within a range of attachments, there are more options. I can't even say that, though. I'm going to take back what I just said and say there's, there's no winner in versatility because you can mow your yard with this. Literally, you cannot mow your yard with that machine. But with this machine, I can cut trees 16 up in, feet up in the air. I can literally drive down a fence row and, and mow off tree limbs 16 foot in the air. Very few tractors have the hydraulic flow to be able to mow with the loader. And there are attachments that do that, but they're very limited in comparison. Something like a post hole digger. Either machine can run a post hole digger, but running one on the front of this is much more enjoyable, especially since you have the reverse. Now on a tractor, you can put one on the loader, but it's much more limited in its capabilities. Last thing I want to talk about before we summarize is how fun are they to operate. I love getting on my tractor. I love driving it. I'd use it like a side-by-side -side sometimes just to get from here to there. It's just like relaxed. You can just chill and drive around. It's kind of like, a, I mean, it's like driving a car. It's so simple. And it's smooth. Even on a hilly terrain, like it, it's comfortable to drive around on it. It also feels more relaxed doing most kinds of tasks with it. The skid loader, on the other hand, for all its extra capabilities, it's kind of fun in a different way, like fun, look what I can accomplish, look what I can do with this. But as far as operating it, if I'm trying to be productive and get a lot done, I don't enjoy it as much. Basically, it's very simple to operate. My six-year-old grandson can get in that and move dirt, dump dirt, 
pick something up and put it down. It's so, so easy to operate and user-friendly. It's amazing. But if you're trying to be productive and work fast, it kind of beats the crap out of you. All the spinning can make me nauseous sometimes. If I'm going over bumpy terrain, I mean, it's like there's no suspension in it at all. It just beats the tar out of you. And trying to go up into a rocky area, it will get places the tractor can't, but you won't enjoy the ride. So, for which one that I enjoy being in more, I'd rather be on my tractor. But the truth is, for a lot of jobs, I end up going with the skid loader because it's faster. And I'm, I'm, I navigate first to the tractor. I'm like, I want to do this with my tractor. I work for 30 minutes and I say, you know, I'd almost be done if I was in the skid loader. So I'll go get it but I, I don't like it as well. So that is what it is. So let's wrap this up. Which machine should you get? First thing I wanna say is which one would I get? That is a really hard decision. I've thought about it and thought about it and I can't come up with an answer. I can accomplish more with the skid loader. So if I could only have one, I guess I would take the skid loader. No. No, I wouldn't. I've changed my mind eight times. Final answer, I'd rather have the tractor if I could only have one. Because it's affordable, and it's versatile, and it's fun to operate. And the attachments are affordable. So that's what I would go with. Now for you, it depends on what you're doing. If you're running a sawmill exclusively, get a skid loader. If that's your whole concern, I want to feed logs to my, to my sawmill, 100% a skid loader. Uh, if you've got 20 acres and you're just doing a little bit of everything like I do, probably the tractor. If you've got deep pockets and you don't care what things cost, get the skid loader. If you're trying to maximize the bang for your buck, get the tractor. An ideal setup for me is to have a small subcompact tractor, a mid-sized skid loader like this one, and a large maybe six to eight ton mini excavator. That's perfect setup. Of course, it's $200,000 also, so we probably won't start there, but it just depends on what you're doing. And if you're wanting paid work from people, it'll that question will answer itself right away. What kind of work do you want to do? So this video rambled. It was all over the place and probably should have made an outline to give a more clear answer, but I just shoot from the hip. I hope you found it useful. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. Put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.